Well, Makeda, thanks for um, agreeing to be interviewed, um, and okay. thanks for joining the. Uh, thanks for joining the um, the Protect the Accent campaign. Um, so, could you just give us um, a, little, a little bit of an insight into your experience of accent discrimination and um, how that's impacted you? Yes, of course. So one of my overriding memories from when I first started working in the city, and this is going back to 1997, is being told to, or being asked actually, and quite politely asked, to just stop dropping my T's and H's. So this was for uh, an investment bank in the city, and I just did. I assumed this is what how people spoke and that's one of the rules that you had to follow so I just changed how I spoke and at the time I didn't really think anything of it but I started working in diversity and inclusion about five years ago and I'm now working in the London insurance market and it became very clear to me that your class or your background and, and how you speak actually has an impact on whether you get a job and how far you progress within the actual um, industry. So I am very interested in trying to help other people not experience that today because I don't think it should be going on now. Hmm. Thanks. Thanks for that. I think, um, I think, yeah, there, I, 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 um, working in DNI myself, I can see there is a, a certain mood towards dealing with uh, uh, issues around social mobility. Um, yeah. and I think accent is probably a, a, a signifier of that. Um, so can you tell me a little bit about what inspired you to join the Protect Accent campaign uh, specifically? So I feel I didn't come into the city via a graduate recruitment scheme, even though I did go to university. I was the first person in my family to do so. I never really had any idea of the graduate recruitment schemes or what was available. So in effect, I suppose I kind of talked my way in. And what I've seen over the last 20 or so years is a proliferation of graduate recruitment schemes. So actually, the diversity in terms of social mobility, I think, has actually decreased since I've been in the city. And I think when you are filling in forms, potentially having telephone interviews, your accent um, and the way that you speak in terms of the language that you use actually has a really big impact. And we've got to a point where people understand what a bias is and mm -hmm. people are actually starting to understand their own biases. So great big strides have been made in LGBT inclusion in gender inclusion, ethnicity is really starting to take off. And I think a thread that runs through all of these is actually how you speak and the words that you choose. And even sometimes the tone that you use, you know, that sometimes women and in particular um, young black men can be accused of being um, sort of aggressive if they try and put their point passionately across. But that never seems to happen if you speak with a, an, a, a certain type of accent or if you look a certain way. So I think it's, it's the right time now. Brilliant. Um, and <clears throat> in terms of some of the things that you've described, what key changes would you like to see or you know, would you recommend in terms of um, inclusion of people with different accents or dialects? I think we're at the beginning, but I think there is a whole set of companies, people and organisations open to actually challenging their biases. So I think we need to raise awareness that people actually are biased against accents because they might say okay i'm really really trying hard in all these other areas but immediately assume that if they hear a certain type of accent that someone's iq is lower or that means oh well they can't have a frontline job they can't be the person meeting the clients they'll have to be in it or they'll have to be somewhere else so raise the awareness to say this is actually a bias show people the impact it has not only on the individuals who don't get the jobs or don't progress, but also say, if you truly want a diverse and inclusive organization, you want people who talk differently, who uh, use different words. It, it's, it's sort of everything encompassing in to the whole diversity and inclusion agenda. I don't think we can have true inclusion unless we work on our accent bias in this country. 
thanks Michaela, I couldn't agree more to be honest. Um, but thanks for sharing your insights. Um, I think um, this is definitely feels like it's a the kind of next stage of development for the um, diversity inclusion space. 